everyone, welcome back and thank you so much for watching. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and talking about some accessories and planty related things that help me take care of my plants. So we're just going to jump in straight away and get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is just behind me right here. You may have seen it come up in my other videos or just lurking around in the background. Uh, it is my humidifier and I find humidity, especially when you like the kind of plants that I like indoors, uh, can be a struggle for a lot of people. This thing has been an absolute lifesaver for some of my plants. Uh, there are all kinds of different humidifiers that you can purchase on the market. This one right here is an Aravec. Uh, it's got lots of different settings that I am able to use and it is remote controlled, which I find really, really helpful when I'm at my desk and don't really want to get up and turn it on. I can sit there and just press the remote and off she goes. This humidifier was a gift, so I don't know the exact price, but I will do a bit of research and pop it down in the description below if you do want to take a look at them. I believe it was purchased from Amazon and um, I don't think it probably would have been more than $100. This is the remote that I was mentioning before. You do have quite a few options. Uh, warm mist, cool mist, you can choose the intensity of the mist. Uh, you can put it on a timer and there's also a sleep function as well. So I can sit here and turn it on. Um, it is on max at the moment. You may not be able to pick it up too much, but you can see it does put out a solid amount of humidity. Um, I really hope it's picking up. I can't quite tell at the moment, but this is the strongest setting. Um, so you do get quite a bit out. Do keep in mind if you do have it near walls or electronics, um, the walls will get wet. I have found that with it placed here. Um, and also near electronics, obviously you want to be careful anytime you're introducing a lot of moisture around that. So just be mindful when you are finding a place for it if you do end up purchasing one. There is also, and I'm just trying to pick it out now, there's also a little cap. Um, I might insert just some photos of it. If you do want it to go in a different direction, you do have the ability to manipulate it, which is also good. The next item I've got on my list, I actually have two of them. Uh, these are humidity monitors. I think they're also called hydrometers or hygrometers. I probably should know that, but I don't. Either way, these are the two that I have. This first one I'll show you, the bigger one is a Therm Pro. You can get them from Amazon and lots of different places. I think they usually retail around $20. I am not gonna lie, I really, really like them. They have a very clear display. They will show you uh, both the temperature and the humidity. You can change it from Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on where you are and how you'd like to view that data. And it also has the maximum and minimum. So uh, one of the things that I like to use these for, especially if I'm looking at putting a plant in a new space and I'm not quite sure how it's gonna go, if it's gonna be too warm or too dry, I will reset it and actually stick it in that place for a couple of days, a week. Um, and that way I'll get a really good idea of the kind of highs and lows that you get um, and know whether it is the right spot to put my plant. Um, this one you will notice if I show you kind of a little bit closer, um, and I have found this with a number of my Therm Pros. You can see that some of the, the bits where the numbers are has started to, to disappear. Uh, I suspect it's to do with the humidity. I do generally keep the areas around my plants quite humid. Um, and I have noticed that whenever I have like a really high humidity day, I lose another bit of my numbers. So it does make it a little bit harder. I can see now that, I mean, the humidity is pretty low in here at the moment. It's it's not pretty low, it's pretty low for me. Uh, the humidity is around 55% at the moment and it's about 22.7 degrees. So I can still read it, um, but it just makes life a little bit more difficult. I have recently purchased these smaller ones from uh, Amazon. I think it was around $20 for a four pack instead of the $20 for one. I thought how cool these, I can attach them to each of my shelves because obviously the humidity and temperature may change depending on where in the room you are at. Generally heat rises, so I would imagine the ones on the top shelf would be a little bit warmer than the ones on the bottom shelf. Um, either way, something I didn't realize when I purchased these is that they only show in Fahrenheit. I am Australian, so we don't really use Fahrenheit all that much. So I kind of have an idea of like the number that I wanted to hit in Fahrenheit and um, you know, just kind of monitor it that way. So I wish that I could change it to Celsius, but for, for four for 20 to kind of lay a few around my shelves, I'm not too mad at that. Um, and I have found it's been very, very reactive and quite accurate from what I can see so far. So yeah, 
not mad at that purchase. And if you've got a lot of plants like I do in various places, uh, these things can come in super handy. There's been a few times where I've noticed a plant getting sick or not looking so good. And uh, this is a really great diagnostic tool to see whether it is the temperature, the humidity, um, perhaps it's too dry, especially if you've got lots of ferns, calatheas. There are lots of plants out there that are commonly kept indoor plants that will be fussy with humidity. So invest your money well. They're, they're quite inexpensive and I wouldn't have plans without these anymore. I don't know how I would live without them. I love them. The next item I'm going to show you is very, very, very inexpensive. You may or may not have one lying around the house already, but the next item I'm going to show you is a spray bottle. This might seem really stupid and redundant, but honestly, I can't tell you how glad I've been on so many different occasions to have a few of these lying around. Whether you don't want to purchase a humidifier, or don't have room for a humidifier, or whatever particular reason you have for not getting a humidifier, this can help especially with those plants that I was discussing before. Ferns, calatheas, those plants that we know do like a high humidity. This is a really inexpensive way to introduce some humidity into the room or into the space that you have them in. Um, it's obviously not going to, to solve any crazy problems with humidity, but I do like to give my plants a bit of a spritz. Some people do think it doesn't really do anything. I just enjoy the act of it, you might not, but there's no harm in spritzing your plants. Even if you don't use it to increase the humidity, you will find your spray bottle come in handy for so many different reasons. Whether it's spraying neem oil for pest control, um, if you need to mix up some chemicals to put on your plants for you know, to control fungal infections or whatever that may be. I just always have a spare couple of these around. I do have a specific neem oil one, which is marked for poison. Um, not that neem oil is super poisonous, but I just like to be careful with that kind of stuff. So again, these are really inexpensive, one or $2. You can pick them up pretty much anywhere. I don't think you need me to tell you where to find a spray bottle, but yeah, always having a couple of these is super helpful. I have talked about the next item on my list quite a bit and how much I love them. And again, really, really basic, but your girl loves a terracotta pot. Just a basic, regular old, hole in the middle, $2 terracotta pot. There are so many reasons why I love these. Not only are they inexpensive, I think they look really beautiful, especially when you have a section of your plants or with matching pots, I think it looks really nice. I think the color is beautiful and it goes with almost anything. Uh, the pots themselves, they generally got drainage holes, which is, I mean, who makes pots without drainage holes? That is just, it's blasphemy, let's be honest. I don't like it, I'm not a fan of it, but these, have holes in them. If you break them, again, they're super inexpensive to replace. You can also, and I have found this with a couple of my plants, diagnose some soil issues uh, because soil will react with the terracotta. You may start to see things like salt bleeding uh, on the outside of the pot. So you can also get an idea of what your soil's kind of looking at. And the last reason why I love these, and I, again, have spoken about this in previous videos, Hi, my name is Beck, and I am an overwaterer. These pots have saved so many of my plants because of the porous nature of terracotta. It will help leach out some of that excess moisture and help keep your plant soil a little bit drier so you're not getting root rot, which is my number one enemy in life. I get really excited over the small things, guys, and this next thing is a small thing, but I absolutely love it. It is a trowel. Not only is it really well made, uh, it also has measurements uh, along as well. So if you're trying to measure or plant something to a certain depth, you do have the added assistance of the measurements there. It is fully stainless steel. It's got a really nice grip and a pointed edge. I haven't yet had to use the pointed edge on anyone or anything. So please don't try and fight me because I'm clearly prepared, but um, yeah, the, I, I, a good quality trial is hard to come by. I've bought so many that have fallen apart and rusted and just ended up being shit. Um, so for something that's really inexpensive that I think is really good quality, you can't go past these ones. Um, I purchased this from Bunnings. They've also got some ones from the same brand that have uh, a serrated or a sharper edge on the side. So you can use it to cut and then dig, which I think is super helpful. I just know that I'm really clumsy and introducing another surface which could injure me 
is probably not a great idea. So I ended up with this one, but take a look at your local Bunnings. I never underestimate the importance of a good trial, especially if you try, try, maybe don't succeed, but try like I do in having nice nails, maybe digging around with your fingers isn't always the best idea. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know how much I love neem oil. I wish I didn't have to use it as much as I do, but I think it's always a really helpful tool to have around. This is the neem oil I purchased. It is Eco Neem. Um, the brand is Organic Crop Protectants. I, I, I don't know if the brand is Organic Crop Protectants. I've got questions about the branding. Regardless, it's called Eco Neem. These are it's essentially a botanical insecticide. You may have potentially used it on pets before. Um, I use this particularly for dealing with uh, fungus gnats, if that's something you've dealt with before, this is a really great tool in um, getting rid of them. Neem oil can deal with lots of different pests, things like mites, white fly, caterpillars, aphids, curl grubs, mealybugs, lawn armyworm, citrus leaf miner, fungus gnats, present, wingless grasshoppers, and sooty mold. So, neem oil, so helpful to have around. It's not super expensive, and you honestly, you don't use a whole lot. I've had this for probably six to eight months now and it is maybe half full still um, and is actually really helpful the way that they've designed it. You can actually kind of squeeze some and measure it in this top side little uh, reservoir here um, and pour it out if you're using a smaller amount or if you're just wanting to do like a big dunk, uh, you can open up from the wider shaped end as well. Uh, you can use neem oil either on the leaves or as um, as a rinse for the roots and for the soil, especially if you are combating fungus gnats. Uh, something I've seen people do is deal mainly with the live ones. You do really have to also be aware of the larvae that they have laid in the soil and those eggs are going to hatch at some point. So you may think that you've gotten on top of this problem and then two weeks later, you're like, where did they come from again? So just something to be aware of if you do have pests, um, or if you do experience them in future, keep in mind neem oil is a really, really great, um, usually pet friendly, I think for most pets it's fairly pet friendly um, solution to an insecticide. It's worth noting that neem oil is also safe for bees, so if you are using it outside, it is probably the preferred insecticide that I use. Bees are really important to our environment, so it's important to look after them where you can, keeping in mind that any insecticides that you're spraying outside, it's likely they are gonna come into contact with, you know, natural, uh, well-meaning and more desirable bugs and insects. So do keep in mind that these insecticides, a lot of the time, they won't discriminate and they will just take everything out. If you've had indoor plants for a while or even outdoor plants for a while, you may have come across fungus. What I like to use when I see signs of fungus is the Yates Fungus Gun. This was actually recommended to me by uh, basically a professional house plant looker after her. Um, someone who looks after plants in commercial buildings. So it has quite a lot of plants I look after. They swear by this, I started using it and now I'm very much the same. Um, it helps reduce any kind of systematic disease or fungus that your plant may be experiencing. Um, it is 0.5 grams per liter of microbutanil. If you've got things like black spot or powdery mildew, you're gonna find this super helpful in getting rid of that. Um, and if it is a mold or something similar to that, I do recommend quarantining once you see any signs of it uh, until you are convinced that you have had a successful treatment just in case it does spread to any other plants that you have around. Next up on the list is an item that I would recommend for people who like to propagate, which is Plant Starter. This is a rooting hormone that is super, super helpful in ensuring that you're getting the highest success rate in your cuttings. Uh, I generally use it to soak my cuttings in uh, for about maybe 24 hours after they're freshly cut, and I haven't lost one yet that I've used Plant Starter on. It's like a greeny, kind of bluey liquid. Um, it's got a bit of a funky smell, but it's not entirely unpleasant. Um, and you just stand your plants in it before you either replant them into soil or uh, any kind of substrate that you're using. Um, this includes indole acetic acid and naphthalene acetic acid. I don't know why I keep reading these things out because I honestly, I don't know what they mean. 
Um, but this is relatively inexpensive. You can dilute it. If you dilute it, it makes up to 360 liters. And I think these are around 10 or 15 dollars. Um, so if you do a lot of propagating or you're coming into propagating season wherever you are, um, grab some of this. It's super handy to have around, um, and it's it's really really great at stimulating growth. Even if it's something that you've just transplanted or an existing plant that you're worried about the roots on, maybe something that could even potentially be recovering from root rot. This is what you need. This. It's like the root doctor, basically. If you think you've got root problems, call the root doctor. Another thing you can use this for is if you really like having cut flowers in your house, you can add a bit of this into the water that you have them in and it's gonna increase that life span. Life span? Life span. I'm actually really curious to use this this year on my Christmas tree. I am one of those people, I have to have a Christmas tree every year and it has to be a real Christmas tree and I have to put it up on the first of every month. It's just this weird thing that I do and just don't judge me. It just must happen. Otherwise, the world will fall apart. <laughs> Can you tell I need therapy? So I'm really curious to see what this will do once I put it in with my Christmas tree because I generally have it for nearly a month before it is even Christmas day. I'm really interested to see how this might increase the lifespan and make my Christmas tree look beautiful for longer but we will see i will keep you updated last item on the list today is something for people who use lecca i have a couple of plants in lecca at the moment i actually have a philodendron florida two sacks i'm actually gonna go grab it so i can show you i didn't actually know that i wanted to bring him on so i probably should have had him ready but this is just a very last minute thing i have this philodendron florida um maybe I need to sit back a little bit he is in lecca as you can see here He's a very happy little guy. And just to show you how much he has grown into this Lekka, I can hold him entirely by the stem and he just hangs. There is, he's not going anywhere. So I know that he's very, very well rooted within this Lekka. This power feed is the hydroponic fertilizer I like to use with any of my plants in Lekka. It is amazing. It has really great plant nutrition. It's got potassium, phosphorus, nitrogen, all those things you want to help your plant grow and grow beautifully. As you can see here, we have, I mean, just stunning leaves. This guy is happy, healthy. This is our newest leaf just here. Um, so obviously, I mean, look at him. He's a happy little guy. I got this from a nursery. He was actually a rescue. He wasn't looking so great when I bought him. And you can see some of these older, I mean, obviously older leaves don't always look as nice, but these older nursery leaves just aren't as beautiful and as vibrant and as thick and as healthy. Um, as I think these older, as I think these newer leaves have uh, come out. So I, I definitely recommend this uh, power feed. It's all in one hydroponic. Um, I dilute mine with water. I feed my plants even in Lekka generally once a week with this. And it is, again, with everything that I've gone through here, it's super cost effective. We don't want to really be plant snobs here. I mean, I'll mix my own soil, but I'm not going to spend $400 on a hose. If you have any better alternatives that you prefer to any of the products that I've brought up today, please let me know and leave a comment down below. I'm always open to trying new things. I'm a bit obsessed with buying new plant accessories at the moment. I, I don't really want to add to my plant collection. There's nothing really that's really super exciting for me unless it's on my wish list. So um, it's really nice to be able to be able to splurge and still treat myself with plant things that aren't necessarily plants. That's it from me today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit like down below. And if you want to see more of my ugly face on your TV or computer screen or even your phone, please hit subscribe. I will be here to haunt your planty dreams. Thanks again. Have a great day and take care. You Bye. Love me. I go start the coffee.